Hey Good Victologists, welcome back to my channel for possibly, probably, most likely, definitely the last time in 2021. And what a year it has been, ups and downs, roller coaster of a year. Let's talk about it. My name is Novus and today I want to do a couple things. First of all, I want to stop moving. Can I do that? Okay. I really wanted to take a moment to look back over this crazy ridiculous year that is coming to a close because I haven't really done that. I haven't had time or taken the time uh, to really sit and process everything that has happened this year. I haven't just sat down and gone over it and processed it because a lot has happened. So I did want to consciously take a moment to sit down and do that. I also wanted to have a look at this year's New Year's resolutions to see whether I kept them. I have a feeling, a sneaky, sneaky feeling that I did not. Or not to the extent that I wanted to, potentially. And just so that you don't have to just sit there and watch me reminisce. <laughs> you can just listen to me reminisce while I show you how I made my Christmas tree. <laughs> this year I decided to make one instead of buying a real one. We've had a lot of storms and they blew over a lot of trees so I had lots of material that was readily available so I decided to make one. I am in my Christmas jumper. I am wearing the hat. This is a Christmas video so let's get into it. So 2021. What a year. Let's Let's just talk about it. And all the various aspects of my life had some really high highs and some pretty low lows. Um, academic life first, I guess. I, I did publish my first academic paper in the few, first few months of this year. Um, that's a massive milestone for me. And of course, some of my most recent videos have been about this and I did hand in and successfully defend my PhD thesis, something I have been working towards for four years um, and it's a huge achievement for me and the amount of work I actually did in the last year of the program is overwhelming when you look back on it. So that that's a massive high, that's a massive high for me. Um, but on the other hand, I did set myself previous deadlines in March, May, and July. Some of you will have heard about them in my Camp Nano videos. Um, and I didn't meet those. And even though they were self-imposed, that does take a toll on your self-esteem, on your confidence, on your um, persistence, your ability to keep going. Because you've set yourself a goal and then you don't meet it. It feels a lot like a failure. And I did beat myself up about it quite a lot. Uh, May was awful. So highs and lows in the academic life, um, quite apart from having to do it all in the time of COVID. In my writing life, also some ups and downs, way more ups than downs, thankfully. Um, I did finish my book in April, which was huge. But then I did spend May in somewhat of an existential crisis because I realized I had written a highly problematic book um, that exposed some of my unconscious biases that I'm incredibly uncomfortable knowing that I have. And I had to confront those um, truths about myself. Um, but I'm choosing to also see that as a high at the same time. I can only see this as a good thing. I don't want to have those unconscious biases. I want, I want to confront them. Um, and fight them and educate myself and be better and um, to, to write something better. And while I haven't written the thing yet, I have done a lot of work on this new project. Um, and I can already tell you that I am very confident that this new project is better. I am by no means done learning and improving, but this is much better than last time. And that is the only thing I can do, is to be better than last time. Also in the writing world, I joined a writing group, which has just been so wonderful. There's some truly supportive, wonderful writers um, in that group that have helped me improve immensely. And, um, and they've become really, really good friends of mine. And it's so much easier to believe in your own writing when you can bounce ideas off other people and, and hear that they believe in it too. So. Um, a massive, massive win for me there. 
in my eco-fiction life, I have had only ups, really. Um, the Discord community is alive and thriving. I learn so much from everyone there. I've uh, picked up so many new resources and book recommendations. The book club is wonderful. Um, I've been privileged enough to be asked to be a judge for a solar punk writing contest with Extinction Rebellion wordsmiths. And, um, and I got to read some absolutely wonderful stories. Some of the winners of the competition will be showing up here on this channel in the new year, which I am so excited about. Um, and I will give you much more information on that um, and my experience with that in the new year. On this channel, I have interviewed wonderful, wonderful people and learned so much from them. I've read beautiful books that have changed how I write and what I want my writing to say and to do. Um, this channel and my involvement with the eco-fiction community has been nothing but wonderful this year, and I'm really grateful for that. In my personal life, also not many downs, really only ups, I'm very happy to say. Um, the main change is that our dog Max joined us around this time last year, and we love him so very, very much. Um, it's so wonderful to have a dog around, and he's so full of love, and he's such a sweetheart. We're so happy to give him a better life than he had before, um, and he brings us so much joy, so. So I am entering 2022 with, all in all, all told, a pretty good year behind me. And I absolutely recognize that I am so privileged and so fortunate to have had such a good year with everything going on. Um, and I, I am so grateful for that. I'm also so ready for a break. <laughs> I'm so ready for Christmas. I'm going to spend it with loved ones and um, I don't need to work. So that was my little look back at what happened in 2021. Now let's look at what I said I wanted to happen in 2021. <laughs> I set myself some resolutions at New Year this year. So let's see if I kept them. So my first one was to bring more scientists into my eco-fiction community. I don't know if I've really done this. I've done it a little bit. I have started an eco-fiction book club at my university. So I do talk to scientists about it, but I don't think I've really done what I thought I would do when I made this resolution. I've I know there's so much more that I can, I could be doing, which probably requires much more engagement from me on Twitter, unfortunately. And I have some ideas about new content that I could do to really combine the two worlds in the way that I want and focus a bit more on science communication. I will be trialing some new type of types of content in the new year to hopefully attract some more scientists. Um, and ecologists and all kinds of ists. Um, not all kinds of ists. There are some ists we don't want here, but you get what I mean. <laughs> to hopefully satisfy this uh, resolution a little bit more than I think I have done. My second one was, and I quote, to tell my imposter syndrome to shush and go sit on the naughty step. And, it, and to be a bit more proud of this thing I want to do and share it with people who know me. <laughs> so the first part I think is going to be a lifelong fight for me because even with all the things that I have achieved this year and all of the validation that those achievements have given me and recognition that people have offered me, I still fight imposter syndrome every day. So I think that's just going to be um, an ongoing struggle. <laughs> I can say I will continue to tell it to shush, but that'll have to happen all the time. And the second I did do, I, I shared the, the fact that I had this channel on my Facebook page and on my personal Twitter, and it was quite interesting to see 
um, the response from friends and family and colleagues. Um, only supportive, of course. I don't know why I expected otherwise. Of course they were supportive and loving, but it's still scary and I don't post all that often so I could up that game a little bit um, just because I do, again, going back to the first resolution, I know a lot of scientists and I have access to a lot of academia <laughs> and I could use that more than I do, which is not at all. The third and most important one was that I wanted to focus more on um, diverse voices in ecofiction and I am truly ashamed to say that I didn't do that as much as I wanted to, um, as much as I should have. Um, so that is also a resolution that I am carrying over to the next year, um, especially where interviews are concerned. Uh, lacking. Lacking. And I don't really know why it takes me looking back at everything to realize this. This should be something that is at the forefront of my mind when I'm planning my episodes. Maybe that's the problem. I have fallen behind in my planning. I'm kind of filming week to week. So like, what can I do this week? Because the video needs to come out in a few days. <laughs> um, so maybe that is a way for me to really focus on that is to get back into planning several weeks ahead so maybe that will mull over in my head over this Christmas break and I can get a few ideas down and secured and then I can really not just pick from ideas that I have and books that I have already read but I can consciously and like with intent <laughs> with purpose pick the books that I do want to showcase so um, needs improvement. So I don't really think there's a need for another resolutions video for 2022, which I was hoping would I would do because that's an episode that I can plan for, but I don't think I need one because all three of these resolutions need to be carried over and um, these are ongoing things. I'm never, I don't think these are things that I will ever truly achieve. There's not an end point. There's never enough diversity in the, the media and the resources that I provide. Um, there's always room to grow with bringing communities together from the scientific and the writing and reading communities and there's always room for self-reflection and wellness and well-being um, and pride in my own work for that to improve as well. So these are ongoing uh, goals and I'll just carry them over to 2022. So that is my 2021 Christmas wrap up. I wish you all a happy, happy Christmas. And um, if you celebrate it and if you don't, then I wish you a happy time with friends and loved ones. I hope you can um, meet up and, and share share a break and take a moment yourself to reflect over the last year. I think taking a moment to reflect um, is useful. It was for me doing this. So, and I wish you all the happiest of starts into 2022. So that's it for me and I will see you next year, Ecofictologists. What do you think, Max? Is it good? Is it good? <laughs> Max thinks it's good. I think it's good too. What do you think, boy? Yeah? Yeah? <laughs> oh, it's really good. That's good to know.